Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com. In this video, I'll show you a speed modeling example of using some sub-Ds to create a spoon and a fork design. Now I'm showing you the command names on the screen, but I also want to generally talk through the workflow. Starting with a sub-D ellipsoid, I'll push and pull to get the form of the head part of the spoon. And then on this opening, I'm going to use dupe edge to get a curve. And the curve is a cross section for a sweep that will represent the handle of the spoon. The sweep is also as a sub D. And then it's just a series of bridging to fill holes and sub object selecting and moving around to get the shape and the form that I want. If you're not familiar with sub-object selection or using the gumball, check out some of the other videos I've done, such as the intro to sub-D geometry or basic push and pull modeling with sub-Ds. I also did a webinar recently, which you can find on the learn page of rhino3d.com, where I do a similar workflow of flatware modeling and I talk through the process at the same time so it's uh, much slower if you'd like to check that out you can. Here I'm using the emap command to check out the topology I've got and you can see I get a little bit of a bubble there because of that n-gon multi-sided face so insert an edge there and everything becomes nice and smooth. Now, my favorite part about this workflow I'm about to show, which is how do you use the same handle for the fork? So you start by making a copy and just delete the head part of the spoon. You could also use extract SRF there, but uh, I just made a whole copy. Now, the workflow I'm showing now is very flexible. It's sometimes referred to as the paper doll method. You start with something flat, like a planar surface, and use quad remesh to get your base sub D. And then that base sub D, I'll taper and offset it to get the thickness, same as I did the head part of the spoon. Here I'm using soft transform. This is a really powerful tool. Just remember to turn it off so you don't forget it's on. And now to bridge between these two edge loops, between the head part of the fork and the handle, the problem is they don't have the same edge count. So I do two edges to two edges on the top and bottom, and then one to one on the side. And then you can use the fill command to let Rhino figure out the best face arrangement to fill the hole. And then I'm deleting some edges here to get the geometry to flow nicer. And I try the same thing on the back here, but I actually don't end up liking the way it looks. So I undo that, delete those faces, and use one fill over the whole area. I turn off reflect and change it a little bit. The last bit of this workflow I'll do in box mode using tab, and that is to straighten out the sidewalls of the tines here. I didn't like the way they looked. So for that I'll use align with the two plane option from the top view. You can see that straightens out that face loop selection. Really handy tool. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.